We're live. Thank you, Thank you Teresa. Uh, we are now on YouTube. This is the Friday morning meeting of the House Appropriations Committee. We have, uh, we only have about an hour to give committee members a full half hour before we go to the floor at 10 to make sure you're ready with your budgets. And I don't know about you, but not having my desk and, and, and things right in front of me like I'm used to, um, I need to make sure I'm organized in a different way than I am when I'm in Montpelier. Um, this morning, we're going to do, uh, we talked about um, um, S338 um, a couple of times. We've taken testimony. Yesterday, uh, we spent some time for any final questions. Um, so I'd like to uh, take that up first, and then we're going to move to the higher education language that will drop into the budget um, probably on third reading on Tuesday. Correct. And at 9.15, uh, we have um, Steve and Stephanie here. There is a number sheet. We had some requests from members um, asking what the percentages are. So I want to make sure the committee is really clear uh, what those percentages mean. And then we need to um, have next week's schedule in hand. We're not meeting on Monday. Uh, but we need to meet Wednesday afternoon as uh, we're going to meet a lot on Thursday and Friday because we are going to have uh, quite a few hundred million dollars of CRF money on our plates with recommendations from policy committees that we need to sort out and turn around uh, very quickly. So we, I just want to make sure that we're all set with our schedule on, um, on for next week. So let's start with um, S338, an act relating to justice reinvestment. Uh, Chip is not here. His ag committee is meeting regarding CRF funding. And so um, he didn't have any questions on the bill. We do have Representative Shaw here. Um, I don't see Representative Emmons. I'm not sure if she is joining us. Um, uh, uh, she is not uh, Representative Toll. We're having a meeting downstairs right now. Then we'll get you right back to that meeting as fast as we can. Thank you. So Thank yesterday you. we talked about some different, someone has some background I'm hearing. It must be Peter's jazz again. Um, no. Nope. We talked about funding opportunities uh, due to the impact of the coronavirus. Um, and I asked about further questions. So um, I'd like to know what the committee would like to do with S338. Are we going to move it if we are how, or are we going to leave it on the wall for further consideration? What is the committee thinking? And this is a big part of Chip's budget and he's not here to do this. So um, Mary, I know a lot of pieces are within uh, your sections too with corrections. Um, So, Tag, you're it. <laughs> and you're having a bit of, uh, let me unmute, let me just try this. Can you unmute? No, 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 so you're both doing it at once, so let Mary do it. <laughs> go ahead, Mary, unmute yourself. <laughs> there you go. There we go, sorry about that, guys. Um, so I would propose that we move it without the money in it. Um, the, um, it's, it's an extraordinarily important policy bill that's been worked on by scads of committees on both sides of the body um, as a result of long-term um, work over the, over the past year and a half to look at how we can fundamentally change the, um, the justice system and with the goal of having some savings within the system as well as being a more humane, effective system. Um, there are policy differences between the House and the Senate version that need to get resolved. And so I think we, we need to release it so that they can begin the work on resolving it. Um, the reason I suggest moving it without the money is because there is still uh, work that needs to be done to see what the, what the funding sources could be. And um, until we have a full and complete understanding of that, I don't feel comfortable saying let's do it this way or that way. 
from whatever pot of money. We heard from the policy committees that they were willing maybe to allow the use of the chins money, but there was some reluctance to go that way. And so I'd like to keep pushing and understanding what other sources of funding could be rather than using up those precious resources. Um, and maybe the last thing that I'll say is the Department of Corrections is still mm -hmm. full tilt trying to understand kind of where they stand financially and what their ability is to put some money to this issue. So I would recommend release it, taking the money out, releasing it um, to the floor so that a conference committee or the resolution can be made <clears throat> of the other um, of the policy issues. Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, I did ask Teresa to put up on the screen. We received um, a letter from the Women's Legislative Caucus uh, specifically supporting uh, this bill. And um, if it has been, if you haven't received it, you will receive it in your emails. And I just wanted to make sure we took note of this and it is in a letter of support um, for um, the policy within this bill to uh, move Vermont forward, especially for incarcerated women. Uh, Representative Helm. Yeah, um, can you hear me? Can you yes. know? All right. Um, so if we move it without money, it goes to the floor. What happens at that point in time? It, we can't simply pass it because it needs money to do the desired results are in it. And so, um, Bob, this, is, this would be an example where the uh, money will catch up with the bill because there there are a couple of options that we know of that are that are um, that that would allow for this funding. And um, because um, of the guidance mm -hmm. of the uh, CRF dollars and um, and what is included within those federal funds. We need to be absolutely sure that um, that it appears and, and we feel strongly that this would be a CRF expense, but we're crossing every T and dotting I's so that um, we're not caught by surprise if we learn otherwise. But it appears that uh, some or all of this could be paid for with CRF dollars. So that we're moving the policy and we'll make it clear on the floor that um, that um, the money will follow. And we, we talked about, um, uh, we have a couple of pots of money, the chins money that uh, it's, it's one time in nature. And this is truly a one time expense because the savings uh, and, um, take care of the program as it did before. Right. With yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, and, and I get that, but I, I just, so what we do is, and we've done it before, I know we pass a bill and it goes someplace and sits because it doesn't have any money. If we don't ever provide that money, that bill never gets accomplished, right? Yes. Okay, that's all I need to know, thank you. Okay, um, I have Marty and then Mary and Kimberly. <laughs> Well, I wanted to, I guess, disagree with Bob's comment and hope Mary can confirm, but indeed it sounds like in section two regarding parole and presumptive parole and number eight regarding furlough and number 14 regarding good time and victims review in section 15 are all changes from the current law. And so that is making changes in policy of how we want to do something. I think that's worth a legitimate consideration on the House floor. And that can happen. It doesn't cost money for those things to happen. And I think that's a good bit of what the uh, sponsoring committee had in mind. Yes, it would be nice to have money to actually implement more community supports and the transitional housing and those kinds of things that go with it. But even without the money, the bill does have some, I believe, some important policy that would be in our interest to promote. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. That That is correct. And uh, I was focused uh, on money. And sometimes I need to broaden that, uh, broaden that look. Uh, I have Kimberly and Mary. 
Yeah, I, I just want to um, echo both what uh, Marty has said and what Mary has said. I'm also committed to um, finding support down the road somehow, some way, because I think this is really important work that's been done by so many people. And I've been engaged also with the Women's Caucus um, in terms of past uh, visits to correctional facilities. And there's just a whole lot of people who care deeply about this bill. And um, I'm glad we're moving it today. And I'm glad to keep working with whomever to make sure that uh, it gets the support it needs in the future. Thank you, Kimberly. Mary, your hand was up and then it was down. And I wanted to respond to Bob's comments. Marty had it exactly. And that's part of the reason I'm anxious to get it out of our committee because in fact, the two sides saw come up some of the policy differences a wee bit, policy issues a wee bit differently and we need to get them to resolve it. Um, there's a lot of good, hard work here that will really change the system and we need to support it. Thank you. Are there any final questions or concerns uh, with the bill clarifications that are needed? If not, Diane, I'm sure you have your book ready in front of you. You are muted, Diane. So I have a, uh, a hearing that a motion to amend S338 as proposed by House Appropriations, which is to remove section 24, if I'm looking at that correctly. Okay. Does somebody yeah. want to yeah. check that? First, we would need the amendment uh, to remove the uh, money section. To strike that section. Right. And I haven't looked that up. Um, yeah, Marty, we're looking that up. Yeah. Uh, we have Butch who would like to um, join in the conversation. Uh, Representative Shaw. Thank you, uh, Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for your consideration of the bill. And it's uh, always disappointing when you lose your funds and appropriations, but understandable in, in today's crisis. Uh, our hope was uh, that at least uh, we something would stay in the bill so that the House could drive the uh, conversation when this bill goes to the Senate on the uh, reinvestment to appropriation. However, I... Uh, understand what's going on and I'm hoping for some, I'm not sure what you're, you're talking about, Madam Chair, with the chins money. Can you explain oh. that to me? Um, the, there is, there, there's a couple of one-time pots of money that, um, that um, have not been fully expended that uh, okay. could be available to us uh, for use throughout, you know, use in areas in state government if needed. Uh, but however, it is um, it is identified for a imp very important use at this time uh, that we that we uh, hope to honor. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you for that explanation, and I certainly support anything your committee your committee decides. Uh, we'll bring the, the bill forward and defend the House position vigorously uh, when we get the conference committee. And uh, I want to thank you all for your time and efforts on this. And, uh, we'll move forward. This, this is a good, great bill, and we can do good work with it uh, in the position that it's in now. Thank you. I, I would say, Representative Shaw, that, that it appears the committee is committed to finding the funds and that the funds will, as I said before, that, in, that these funds uh, could marry the bill later um, and then join hands and become whole. I get that. Thank you. How all of our marriages are, we're whole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Okay. Um, You're performing a lot of marriages. I know, I know. I, I feel like it's uh, officiating. Yeah. Um, uh, Diane, uh, Representative Lampier, do you have a motion for us? So if it pleases the committee, I move to amend S338 as proposed by House Appropriations to strike section 24. Is there a second? I have a second from Maida. And is there um, uh, any comments or questions at this point on the amendment? If not, the clerk shall call the roll. Representative Conquest. Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Yes. Representative Helm. 
Yes. Representative Cooper. Yes. Representative Jessup. Yes. Representative Lanfer. Yes. Representative Myers. Yes. Representative Townsend. Yes. Representative Yacovoni. Yes. Representative Toll. Uh, yes, and I would ask that we leave the vote open until SHIP returns. Great. Okay, we have passed the amendment and now we're on to the bill itself as amended by House Appropriations. I would entertain a motion. Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to move that we report favorably on S338 as amended by the Committee on Corrections and Institutions and further amended by House Appropriations. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I have a second from Representative Myers. Uh, any final questions, thoughts, clarification needed? If not, the clerk shall call the roll. Representative Conquest. Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Yes. Representative Helm. Yes. Representative Hooper. Yes. Representative Jessup. Yes. Representative Lanfer. Yes. Representative Myers. Yes. Representative Townsend. Yes. Representative Yacovoni. Yes. Representative Toll. Yes. Leave it open for- Please Chip. leave that open for um, uh, Chip as well. And who um, reports out this bill? Is this yours, Mary, or is this Chip's? Um, good, good question. I'm guessing it's me because the under, the reason we had it was the underlying appropriation, which was to DOC and they're mine. Perfect. So you will make sure it gets signed and what you need oh, to yeah. virtually to the clerk's office. Yeah. Want to make sure Diane we will have to tell me how to do that. Thanks. Yes. With okay. Teresa. Great. Thank you. We are a little bit of, uh, ahead of schedule, and I see that we have two Ledge Council members from us. We have uh, Jim Damaris and Bryn Hare here, um, and we're going to talk about the uh, higher ed language. Um, I did, um, I did, I just, something popped into my mind, and I don't want to forget it. I have asked the speaker uh, to send uh, the letters or the totals or the ranges that committees of jurisdiction were given. Uh, concerning CRF dollars. Uh, we did not receive one because we're working with these companies instead of we get to appropriate all of it actually. And uh, after, they, after they send their recommendations. And so just so that you know uh, the ranges that, um, that were put in for housing, economic development, broadband, um, so, so that everyone has a, a clear picture of what the committees are working on. And I asked those to be sent to Teresa and then forwarded on to all of you. So um, Teresa, I hope you've received those or will soon. I, uh, the speaker might need a reminder. She's quite busy these days. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. I've been trying to track next to each committee what they had stated from their letters as to what they're working from, just so we have a context when we receive their bills. Thank you, and we should be getting that. Um, I requested it yesterday morning, so we should hopefully get that soon. So uh, let's see, we have Bryn and uh, Jim. I have to look around my screen. Did we lose Bryn? So she was here for Justice. Yeah, Bryn, Bryn was here for S338, and she just sent the amendment to us. Okay, perfect. And I'm gonna wrap that up, and Representative Hooper, Representative Lanford, I'll create the email that you'll just reply to and confirm yep. the and the pages and all that okay. stuff. I'm waiting to hear from Chip, I though. I may have to screen share before then, so it just uh, be patient. Okay. Okay, we have um, 15 or 20 minutes um, to um, review uh, the education language that is, um, has been done with three different committees. Peter has taken charge of that from this committee, and this is a language that would um, mm. analysis of the higher education system in, in Vermont. So um, are we starting with Jim going over the language or Peter, how, how, are we, how would you like to roll this out? Depends upon how much time you want to, want to assign to it. If you want to go through it line by line, 
it may take longer than what you want to do right now. It will be an amendment to our bill and will be formally presented to us next week uh, by the by the amenders, which is uh, which is Kate Webb et al. Um, and you'll see that there. Uh, what I so would like. I, oh, go ahead. I can go through the the uh, the uh, concepts instead of going through the language. If you'd like me to do that. So I think what I would like to do is, since Jim is here and I would like him to leave, I would like him to do the broad strokes of the language, Peter, and then you talk about the concepts. And we need to uh, be done at 9.15. Uh, members, this is not going to turn around quickly. This will be a Tuesday issue. And, and so if we need to come back and meet over this or we send uh, communication to Peter for any tweaking that we think uh, might be needed. So Jim, would you like to just walk us quickly through the sections and then we'll have a whole weekend to work on it. Sure, yeah, and uh, so for the record, Jim Demarion, that's Consul, uh, reviewing this amendment by individuals um, on the Education Committee. I want to first to thank Joyce for her work on this. She's done a ton and uh, I put this into a sector of language. She really developed this, so thank you, Joyce. Um, so I just lost, hold on, here we go. Um, okay, so uh, uh, creates the uh, Select Committee on the Future of Public Higher Education in Vermont. Uh, it will assist Vermont in developing a vision and plan for high quality, affordable and workforce connected future for public higher education in the state. Um, the membership, I'm not sure who's got control of this document, is it me? Uh, Teresa does, she'll yeah. move it down, Teresa. There you go. You. And so we don't we have, have to go through each piece of the membership is we can read through those. Okay, here. so they're up to 22 members. The concept is basically um, uh, the, uh, there's gonna be a, 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 a steering group, which we'll get to in a minute. And the steering group will be naming some of these members. So as you see that, that's what's happening uh, when the reference is to the steering group. But if you scroll down through the membership, um, toward the end of the membership, you've got two possible additional members um, in L. Uh, that would be uh, at the discretion of the steering group. So it's 20 plus a possible two more. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the committee, a committee member may be appointed to fill more than one role. Um, and that's designed to keep the numbers down if they can be kept down. Uh, there's a steering group that's being created, created by this, um, uh, and the members are five members, uh, and three are chosen by the speaker and pro tem, and two by the governor. That provides leadership to the committee and, and uh, works with a consulting firm. Um, and uh, it's authorized to form one or more subcommittees of the committee to address uh, key topic. Uh, area. Um, collaboration just simply the committee will uh, seek input uh, and collaborate with key stakeholders. That's designed to keep the numbers down, down on the com committee, committee, but have people have the ability to give input to it. Powers and duties of the committee um, are you know, three main things they're doing. Um, so their leading language talks about um, uh, building and previous stud studies, uh, offer recommendations on increasing uh, affordability, access, retention, attainment, et cetera. And then specifically, there are three areas. And these three areas tie to reports that will be um, issued by the committee, which I'll come to in, in, in a minute. The first is looking at the financial sustainability of the public higher education structure and its impact on capacity. Um, the second is to uh, uh, look at the uh, organizational structure of public higher education. Uh, and the third is to look at the um, tie into workforce development goals. The three broad areas we're looking at. Uh, JFO, um, in collabor collaboration with the New England Board of Higher Education, NEBI, uh, would issue a request for a proposal to hire a consultant uh, to assist the com com committee. And that has to be in place by the end of June. Uh, the assistance is coming from JFO and from NEBI, NEBI Student Project Management. I think on July, is that July, not June? Uh, sorry, yeah, July, I'm sorry, end of yeah. July, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, reports, so as I mentioned, there are, um, there are uh, multiple reports. So there are three reports. The first is due 
uh, by June 20th of this year, focusing on the first group of um, duties we talked about, uh, which is the financial side. The second report is due June 15th of next year, looking at organizational structure and, um, and on the workforce development. And the final report recorded the findings from the earlier reports and included the action plan. And that's due uh, by December 15th of next year. Uh, those reports are delivered to the governor and the General Assembly. Um, and then, um, importantly, the Speaker of the House in Part 10 would select the chair of the, of the committee um, and would seek to exist on uh, January 31, 2022. Typical compensation reimbursement language here, so nothing special. And Jay, we can just move on to the next subsection. Uh, stop here though, oh, sorry, uh, Teresa. So number three talks about the number, sorry, uh, here, yeah. Uh, it talks about the number of meeting, meetings for which they would get reimbursed. So it assumes for each fiscal year, 21, 22, six in-person meetings of the, of the committee, eight in-person meetings of the steering group, and four remote meetings of up to four subcommittees, assuming compensation and reimbursement for up to five members of each subcommittee. Um, and then appropriations, there's an appropriation of $40,000 approximately for per diem compensation um, and reimbursement. And then two talks about taking, um, transferring money from another section of your bill to fund the consultant. Um, so um, I think uh, probably JFL can explain that better than I can. And then last, we had to change the effective date because we had to work in this new section. So if you scroll down further, all we're doing is we're adding on um, the second line there a reference to A9 going effective upon passage. Okay, and so before we ask questions, I would ask Peter to talk about some of the broad strokes now, you, you know, how, how, how it landed in the structure and also Peter, the timeline, uh, can we tighten that or do we have to stay as it is? So let me start with, with how this all transpired. This was, this is a very much um, shortened version of what had originally been proposed. Um, Kate Webb and I talked, and I can't remember who else was, just, was a part of that discussion. And just, it was, oh, Peter Conlon and, um, and a couple of others. But at any rate, it was just very, very um, dictatorial as far as do this, do that, and did not allow for the exploration of, of alternatives that might come up while they're going through their work. So um, we, came, we coalesced around an idea of getting enabling language in the, in the budget, and this is what you see. Uh, and then a letter from the committee chairs will be sent to that basically states, make sure you look into these areas and these concepts. Uh, that letter is, there, there's a lot of uh, pieces to it. I don't have any of the pieces, but Kate and, uh, uh, is, is managing that, and that letter will be produced for, uh, for the Chair of Education, the Chair of Commerce, and our Chair of Appropriations. And uh, one would presume that the Senate uh, counterparts will be asked to, to sign it, but I can't speak to that. Um, so that's, that's number one. Um, the the I just I want to go through the timing and then and then the appropriation piece. Um, the it, as far as my input to policy, um, other than the two individuals that were added just in case, uh, I was uh, I was as I term it lurking in the background on Zoom meetings, uh, just listening uh, because I'm not a part of that policy committee. If I was asked, I, I offered, but uh, they were stuck on how do we get other people involved. That, that they really could use. And, I, and so that's the piece I offered is let's, let's do a two, two people floaters. And so that's, that's the only piece in there that's, uh, that is really my handiwork. Um, the, so just to run down briefly the timing here, the steering group, the five members of the steering group that comes from the total committee of 20, 20 up to 22 people, those five members shall be appointed by 29 June. The speaker and the pro tem shall collaborate to appoint three the governor shall appoint two. At the same time, JFO and Nebi are going to release an RFP to hire a consultant. The RFP shall be released by the 17th of July with the intent to select by 31 July, very tight time frame. Um, the first committee meeting shall be called in August. 
on the 28th. That'll give enough time for, for the, uh, the steering committee, for UVM, for Vermont State Colleges, uh, to determine who their participants shall be. Um, the, uh, uh, as, and Jim did a great job, so I'm not really gonna get into any of the, any of the, uh, uh, the intricate pieces here, but um, the NEBI is project manager support uh, to the committee. And since we have been paying them all along, Kate asked them to do this as part of the funds that we've been paying them, they have agreed. So they are at no additional cost to the state. Uh, the funding for this, the, um, the $40,000, uh, it is going to the agents of the Secretary of Education. And I have talked to Kate Webb this morning, who will, in, who will talk to the Secretary. Um, the Secretary was chosen. It needs to be an executive branch, uh, someone from the executive branch somewhere. JFO does not pay people. They may, they may uh, move funds around, but they don't pay individuals. So that, that doesn't work. Uh, so then it's between the legislature uh, and an executive branch function, really not appropriate for the legislature pay, uh, pay function to pay these individuals. So, um, because we don't normally do that. So it, uh, it came down to a member of the, uh, of the executive branch and the, the best option that we could think of was Secretary of Education, so that's how we landed there. The funding for this um, section, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here, uh, wait a minute, I can go right to it. A for B, that's our bridge funding section of the bill. Right now it has $5 million of general fund allocated to it. Um, I think that's A3 and not A4. I don't have our bill in front of me. I have the, I have the, uh, the proposed higher ed language bill in front of me. So we need it's to double check It's within section A3, small letter B. Yes, Madam, Madam Chair, I received, yep. I received uh, some language last night, uh, kind of late from Stephanie and they were renumbering things and she assured me that it would be A4. So it, it may be changing as we speak, I don't know. Okay, then I need a new bill before I go to the floor in half an hour. Um, but we'll we'll get that number right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if if it gets renumbered because because this is being amended, it's okay. Yeah. We'll fix that. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. So, whatever number it is, the five million dollars of general funds that are the bridge funds, and whatever is added to that, that's where the funding for the consultant will come out of. I like the idea of pulling it out of there for. A few reasons. Number one, we don't have a whole lot of additional general fund dollars. Well, I should restate that we don't have any additional general fund dollars. Um, the the interim chancellor, uh, she wasn't fond of it, but she did not object to the funding for this coming out of that. Uh, and by doing it this way, we are not signaling to a, any consultant groups. This is how much you can you can bid for it. You know, typically we'll put three hundred up to three hundred thousand dollars, and guess what the bid is three hundred thousand dollars. So nobody knows. Um, this way, we'll, we'll we'll hopefully we'll get a good universe of consultant groups that that are capable of doing this job, and uh, and to help us figure out what the future should look like, so that we can move towards it. And that's it, Kitty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. So uh, we have about uh, five or 10 minutes before we move to uh, the Joint Fiscal Office for another piece. Are there questions for either Legislative Council or, or Peter on some of this language or need to be included? I have Bob and Kimberly. Okay. There we oh, there you go, Bob. Okay, on a side note that probably most of you won't want to hear, uh, we, you, we've got this one. This is the first of what I see as three so far coming out in a series spread out over a couple of years, all right? Someplace I would like, and I'll tell you, it's at a time in, I believe, in Vermont State College history that is crucial. Because after this is all said and done, they're either going to be propped up or they're going to be out of business. All right. One or the other, whichever it is, needs to have, I believe, historical explanation in writing. So 
what my thoughts are is, and I just want y'all to think about this for now, as we go along, how can we put together a book, if you will, whatever you want to call it, which includes all, all of the developments through the financial process of trying to prop up the Vermont State Colleges and put it into a document that is sealed as accurate and something that in 10 years, somebody can go back and look into and see, wow, this is what they did to save Vermont State Colleges or whatever. That's all I want to do is, is put this down. And Memorialize it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, Bob, we will have that conversation and find the group that would help uh, collate all this information, get it in, in one place uh, and keep it as, as, you know, for future decisions. I'm not sure what that is right now, but Peter, do you have a thought? Well, I do have a thought, and I don't know if this answers the question, but certainly it, it, it can be a piece of it. Um, this group is going to pull all the past studies off the shelf to, in, to ensure that anything that is relevant that was done in the past is considered as part of this, and then, and then put together their study. And the last thing they do is they'll issue an action plan um, at the end of next year, by the end of next year, to, to move forward. Uh, that action plan could encompass, probably ought to encompass, uh, just as a statement up front, these are all the things that have been done in the past, and this is what we need to do in the, in now uh, to be able to go to the future. Peter, would you uh, please circle around with the Education Committee and ask how this can all be put in a file together, and the file would stay not only with House Education, but also it should go to um, the Institutes of Higher Education, the public <coughs> public ones. Thank gotcha. you, Bob. So, so that it would be housed within the state colleges, UVM, and the education committee, Bob, a file with all this all this information. That, that's a good point, because right now I think VSAC is the holder of all of it. Uh, and maybe VSAC would hold it too, so it could be in several places, and, uh, and in 10 years we could at least try to get our hands on one of them. Thank you. Several Bob. places would be good, actually. Yep, it's always better. <laughs> Uh, Kimberly and Mary. Um, hi, I, I'm missing the whiteboard at this moment. Just want to clarify there, you have the per diem, in terms of funding, you have the per diem, you have the 5 million in bridge funding or, or whatever figure is ultimately agreed upon and the consulting fee comes out of the 5 million bridge. Did I get that correct? That's yes. correct. So, and Kimberly, the $40,000 is to pay for um, for monitors. The legislative uh, piece will come out of our the JFO summer study piece that Steve has told me we got it no no issues so that's not that's even for the in here yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it says legislators shall be paid the way we normally do for summer studies but we haven't assigned any money to that because funds are available. But the the uh, Vermonters that would need to be paid would come out that would come out of that piece and the analysis would come out of the bridge funding. We would include that in the bridge funding. Bingo. Uh, Mary, thank you, Kimberly. Were you done before I moved to Mary? Mary? I, I just wanted to appreciate what Bob suggested. I, I think that's a terrific idea. And so thanks for that, Bob. I just have a process question. You were concerned about getting the right number today, Kitty. We are not dropping this on the bill today, correct? Tuesday, on Thursday. Yeah. So we will have a chance. I'm not reading this right now, and I want to sit down and reflect on it. And yep, that's you, that's your weekend reading, Mary. Oh, is that it? That's all I have to do. Yeah, yes. do I love it. <laughs> and and I'm watching sorry. a whole bunch of videos to see, uh, you know, what policy yeah. committees are are talking about with CRF funding. Uh, uh, Dave. Oh, and then Peter. Dr. Peter, can you tell me? Um, there's an interim report to be filed December twentieth of this year. And I'm just trying, I'm looping back up through the bill to see yep. what that report will address. Okay, so that's the first of, of three reports, if you will. The last one's mm -hmm. an action plan. Uh, this one talks about the, um, 
um, uh, let me just make sure that I don't, there it is. Financial sustainability of the public higher education structure and its impact on inst institutional capacity to innovate. In other words, we need, to, we need to make sure that we continue to move toward the future uh, and meet state goals and learners' needs, including, a, and including in that a comparison of higher education programs uh, across uh, all the delivery uh, um, places, delivery models, i.e. distance learning, um, uh, sitting in the seats or a combination thereof, and then uh, struck, and then also look at, at the structures in other states, the, the, the uh, excuse me, educational structures in other states. So that's the first report due end of this year. End of this so Peter, year. Mm -hmm. yep. So would, would you envision legislative action being necessary in the first year of the next biennium, or do you anticipate that to be in the second year, which is always harder, but just wondered, um, would there be any action needed? So this is testing? conjecture on my part, truly, because it will really depend upon what this report says. Uh, I think that the, when the report is delivered, um, unless all of a sudden the system itself um, has an influx of students that makes it much more viable to the future, uh, I think that uh, if that happens, then this becomes much less a, a, an urgent issue. If that does not happen, I think it would behoove us to do something at that point in time. Uh, that's my conjecture. Thanks. It's up in the air then. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Diane. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, yeah. Dave. Uh, Diane? Oh. Well, now I am. So... Not that this is now, but the, the A9 is hanging out there that I thought this language, we were saving space in section A9 says reserved. Yes. So there might be a bunch of changes coming, but I just hanging that out there. Yep. yep. So A9 is where we'll put it in the bill on, on Tuesday. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Kimberly? I think I just found it. I was looking for the place where student voice would come in and I think I see it now, page two at the top, line three. Okay, never mind. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Peter? Um, Diane and Dave, are your hands up new or are they from before? Uh, okay. And so, um, uh, Peter, I'm sure there will be continued tweaking of the language. Um, I'm hoping that um, the speaker has seen it since she has roles within this um, and uh, has, has weighed in. And, um, and it's a bit of a work in progress. And, and so the committees may all work uh, as it still travels to the Senate and travels back to us. Um, right. And, and Kitty, I just want to make a, uh, uh, also a few thank yous because Joyce Manchester really did yeoman's work in doing this. Uh, the New England Board of Higher Education, NEBI, really a lot of work in doing this. And then, and then to all of a sudden dump it into Jim Demaray's lap and say, here you go, figure it out. Jim really did a good job as well. Um, this, this was a very much larger, it would have had to have gone as a bill. We couldn't have amended it based upon the first, the first cut, but, uh, they all did a good job, and a lot of, and I know at least twice when I when I clicked off, it was okay. Joyce and Jim and Nebby are going to co collaborate. And we're all going away, and and they did. So they did very well. So I just want to thank all. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Joyce and Jim. We we appreciate it, and we know it was a a lot of work over the last few days to to get it to this point, and we we appreciate that. Okay, we are going to um, oh um. I want to ask of the committee before we go further, um, um, the, the funding mechanism right now to use the, um, to use the bridge funding, do we have uh, support from the committee? Uh, if, if you are supportive of using that mechanism, can I have a hands up or a virtual hand or? Okay, we're unanimous there, so we're good. Uh, Steve, you sent us a document. We had some uh, legislators um, yesterday uh, outside of the committee that asked about uh, uh, per percentages. Um, this was a language bill really built on language and percentages, but I believe it was Marie a great deal of time yesterday coming up with a sheet that looks like this, Teresa, if you would put it up. 
And um, I did make calls to members who had who had contacted me with particular uh, on what on what I'm, I'm um, out of mute here. Theme. And so I would like, Steve, if you would like to walk with. Um, yeah, and Stephanie's in the room too. If we need to, uh, I am. I look like I'm on Maria's, but we're both in the office today. Okay. And Stephanie, I think you worked on this as well with Maria. So thank you, thank you to both of you. I know it was a tremendous amount of work. There, there's this sheet, and then there's also the coronavirus tracking sheet. Um, yeah. So there's two fiscal sheets. Yeah. Okay. So this one I'll just go through quickly, and then Stephanie can answer any complicated questions. But the general fund is listed at 36 percent, even though we know it's 25, because there's a lot of items that we funded up front, like uh, the pensions, um, the death service and um, state colleges, an extra 5 million. So all of those types of things bring the number from the 25 to the 36%. Um, transportation <laughs> fund is uh, 58. I think it was, we funded it a lot in advance. I don't think we funded the, um, the TIB in advance, but I think we, why 58 is different than the 60 is the reason there. Uh, um, it's also, it's, it had, probably has to do with state police because we didn't, they're only in at 25% of their transportation fund, but the rest of the agency of transportation is in at 60%. Okay. And special funds includes the pilot money. And that's why it's higher than the 25 because it's like eight, uh, we fully funded pilot, which is about an $8 million item. So that may have been what brought it up to the full 32. Um, um well, the, the, the other piece in the 32, sorry to see, is that we did, um, 50% of, of A&R's fund funding, and they have a lot of special funds. So that's- All what's right, probably right, right. Um, tobacco fund, state healthcare resource fund at 25, fish and wildlife, the uh, education fund at 100%. And well, fish and wildlife at 50, just because of timing issues of when those dollars roll out the door, right? Yes, that, that it's, it's part of the whole, you, you did the entire agency of natural resources oh, at 50%. Right. Thank you, thank you. And the federal funds will probably reflect the transportation funding being higher, uh, exactly. plus CRF money. Uh, no, CRF money is not included in this total. Oh, really? It's okay. on a separate sheet. Okay. So there's so probably more related to the, whether it's the transportation fund and other uh, matching funds like that. Um, so there were some large ticket items that really did push these numbers, mostly in the general fund, because we're obligating, we're not paying. Is correct, Stephanie, tell me if I'm correct. We're obligating the money that we will, that we will have it, but we're not going to push it all out the door the first quarter for debt and pension obligations. Is that correct? Um, I'm, I'm confirming that, but it, uh, for the past several years, we actually have move the money, the, 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 you know, the large amount of, of state general fund dollars out the door early in July from the yeah. state into the system. I don't know if that's, and, and we're checking on the cash flow implications of that on the Senate side, um, but that, you know, that, that it, it's, it wouldn't be a surprise if that happened um, okay. with, the, with, the, with the retirement pieces. Um, the other piece that you have included in that general fund total, obviously, is the Pay Act piece in the back of the bill. Oh, okay. So that would, okay. And pay act. So that, is, that one does not go out. I mean, it, a big chunk of it goes out in July, but the rest of it does not necessarily all go out in the first quarter. Okay. Uh, committee questions. I have Marty. Yeah. My question is related to that, actually spending the money out the door. Do you know what the prospect is on the education fund? So the, the education fund actually going to take right. that money and spend it out the door? No, I mean thirty-four percent goes out roughly. We um, goes out in uh, I think it's in September. Yeah, and September. Payment, and that the rest of it should not be going out the door until later in the year. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. I have two other hands. Got to see who they are. Uh, uh, Dave. So are we in effect looking at, if you look at the, um, the 1.6 billion general fund through Act 88, and then you, you um, take away the 600 uh, million, are we, and so that leaves about a billion of general fund left um, for the August, September budget. And are mm -hmm. we looking at about a $200 million hole now? Yeah, but there's two things to remember. One is that the general fund in August will be higher than that. Because when you did the bill, 
when the governor did the original 21 bill, it was not 1.655, it was 1.7. So it'll be, there's a little bit more in what we expected to spend in 21. And you're correct, there, there still is a $230 million um, shortfall, but that, that'll probably change between now and August. I'm hoping it changes for the better and it goes down a little bit. Plus, we're also doing everything we can to find ways uh, to use CRF creatively. Yep. Um, so we're hoping that uh, you There's don't a, have that problem. A lot of movement left to come. Initially, I was thinking <laughs> right. we needed a 14% reduction. And looking at this, I said, oh, we need a 20% reduction. But it's just too many moving parts to say that at this right. time. Right. And, and we, we, Thank you. you have to remember that the, uh, there is already rolling forward from this year to next year uh, the, um, oh, I don't know what's, uh, there's some money you rolled forward. I think it's about 30 or $40 million and there'll yeah. be some carry forward. So you'll have other pieces that we just haven't interpreted. And the other thing that to think about in August and September is to the extent that this, and this is a, the downturn of 230 is a, a double type of problem. One part of the problem is a one year shortfall. And the other part is an ongoing reduction in revenue. To the extent that it's a one year issue, it doesn't, um, we shouldn't rule out using reserves because there is um, caseload reserves and rainy day funds, which could be used to cover the sort of the mm -hmm. chasm of, of FY 2021. You don't want to use reserves if it's the ongoing shortfall. So I think in August, a lot of those decisions will be on the table. I'm following you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I think that we can easily uh, explain these percentages on the floor. Uh, to members, um, you know, what, what is, what is uh, pressing some of them. And any final questions is we need to move to the CRF sheet. Okay, Teresa, uh, could we move to the, the CRF sheet? Do we, do we have that one, Madam Chair? Uh, it's coming up. Um, no, I meant and Maria, Maria can go over this if you want her. Um, was this sent? I hope this was sent. I, I didn't see it. I no. just got it, and and I I have to apologize because my outlook completely died in the middle of the meeting. And so I will send it as soon as I stop sharing here. Okay. These are just the totals of where we have spent CR money, and they're on all of those COVID trackers. You know, we can. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, on any of those, but this is one that's handy for the floor. Yeah. And um, so um, while we're waiting for it, it, it I think that we can talk about it. Steve, do you want me to talk about it? You're gonna talk about it? Either way or, or Maria could, Maria prepared this. Maria, year. Maria. Yeah. Hi, so are you ready for me to talk about it? Yeah, we're gonna talk about it and I'll jump up on your screen, but it, it, the numbers are in all of these COVID records. So, Go ahead, Maria, please. Okay, so um, this is a summary document and it just puts, it includes the big numbers. So you'll see that it's the CRF dollars from the 1.25 billion and it's from the house perspective. And is it up yet? Is the document up yet? Yeah. Yes, it must be, I'm looking at it. Oh my gosh, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, so the first thing, approved by JFC on um, May 12th, that's their tier one and tier two spending. That 167 million, um, you can access if you wanna know the details, the link there is a live link. It's also on the Joint Fiscal Office website if you go to the Joint Fiscal Committee. Um, and then there was, there was a total of 225 million, I believe that was set aside for the JFC to allocate so they only allocated 167 million of that. That leaves a balance of 57 million that I have on the second line, well, line seven, let's say. It's the JFC allocation to be determined. And then on the eighth line, adjustment for FEMA items, that's what we estimate at this point um, might be covered by FEMA. So, um, so that's mm -hmm. why it's a negative number. I'm sorry, was there a question? Clearing up a voice. I'm sorry. I, I need to mute myself because I'm. Um, mm, mm. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Um, okay. So then the next line, the H953, the supplemental BAA, that is 
that's the combined number for the House and Senate, what was added in CRF funds um, in that bill. Um, we also, the House also uh, passed out the H951, which is the municipal lending bill of 2.7 million. Uh, the next line down, line 11, is the treasurer, this hazard pay true up. We don't have a number for it, but I thought I should include it in this document. Um, it has to do with um, allocating funds for um, the retirement system. And we'll hear more about that, I think, when the treasurer has a chance to estimate what it should be. Um, and then the next number down on line 12 is H961, which is the bill that you're looking at today. And that has a total of $47.3 million appropriated in it, which gives you a total allocation of 265.9 million. And then if you if you just reduce that the 1.25 billion by this 265.9, it gives you a remaining CRF balance of 984. And this, you know, as as I mentioned, it doesn't um, account for other bills out there that haven't been passed by the House. And so, you know, you have heard of other things, but they're just not accounted for on this document. And so uh, for the House position, um, there's $984 million left that we know has not been assigned at, at this point. And from that piece, there will be, um, th this is what committees of jurisdiction are working on, and they are not going to spend the full 900 plus million dollars. Um, uh, we are going to, um, I believe the, the speaker and, and others are thinking of holding it back um, some dollars in case, um, guidance changes and it can be used to replace uh, lost revenue. And, um, and so that's why committees of jurisdiction are working on two different numbers. They're working on what we can get out the door now for economic development and housing and you know, agriculture, uh, you know, whatever, you know, all those pieces, broadband. And then um, a second phase, which can be built from the first or different items um, for uh, remaining dollars, depending on what's available in um, August and September. So the big, the big numbers for the floor today are: we've spent to date um, about two hundred and sixty-six million dollars, and we have nine hundred and eighty-four remaining. And this brings us right to nine thirty. I think that we're in good shape for the floor. Stephanie, Maria, um, Maria, thank you, Stephanie, and Steve, thank you for this information. It's, it's very helpful. I just want to quickly uh, go over the schedule for next week because we are going to need big chunk of time. Uh, can, for, for Ma Ma Madam Chair, can I just jump in quick and just ask Representative Conquest how we'd like to vote before we- Please, vote? please. Um, on the amendment, uh, Representative Conquest, that, that was a motion to uh, hold off on the appropriation, so we remove section 24. Uh, how would you like to vote on that amendment? Yes. Thank you. And then on the full bill, uh, Representative Con Conquest, how would you like to vote on S338 uh, uh, as amended? Yes. Thank you. I, I assume there was discussion about, um, about Deep the money and and wonderful. About how we might make sure that we fund it one way or another. Yes, yeah, I think Representative Hooper will be reporting this on the floor and uh, um, she could answer those questions so we don't take time now. From okay. oh, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Diane, and thank you, Chip. So if you would like to get your calendars out wherever you do your calendars, I do not think we need to meet on Monday because committees of jurisdiction are not going to be anywhere near having their work done. Tuesday, we're on the floor from 9 to 10.30 and 3.30 to 4.30, but I wanna leave you open on Tuesday to be listening in on these committee discussions. Wednesday morning, I would like to leave open because I bet there's going to be a lot of scurrying to get these bills done by noon. And we're on the floor at two, but I, I think I'm going to have to ask permission from the speaker for us to be working because we've got to turn this around quickly and we can't turn it around if we're not in committee. So Wednesday, 
Um, we're going to start getting these bills hopefully before noon and by noon. Uh, do we want to do it in two sections so we have a bit, a bit of a break, like from uh, 12 to 1.30 and then maybe 2.30 to 4? Or do you want to do one long session? What, what's your pleasure? One long session for me. Peter's two, Bob's one. <laughs> Okay, they're, they're all long, one yeah, long they're all long. with a break. We could have some breaks in there. Yeah, I, I, you know, I guess we could do a big chunk of time and then just uh, take a committee break like we do mm -hmm. anyway. Um, Teresa, what is best for you working and keeping us on Zoom? What would be uh, best? You can do whatever you want. I, I'm, I'm flexible. I mean, you're always I can make it. <laughs> I can make it work however people want to do it. Kitty, I, I, I will guarantee that if the vast majorities of committees will not have something to us by noon. <laughs> um, and That's we, forever memorialized. Yeah. Well, but it's, I, yeah. I, we just know how hard this is for our yeah. colleagues. So I would suggest a little later in the day, and somehow we're going to need time to individually to digest what they're sending. So maybe we gather um, at one, see what we have, um, and then take a break and, and then really <laughs> rock and roll later in the afternoon. So let's do um, one to four thirty or five, and we'll break it up as we need. I'm going to put in one to five. Okay. Yeah. And then in the morning, be ready to gather. So we're we may not be officially meeting, but we're going to be getting information all morning long, right? Right. Okay. And Am I eight thirty? Uh, I'm sorry. On but Thursday, Kitty. Wednesday yeah. afternoon, we have a house floor. I'm going to get I'm going to get permission for us to not be there because uh, unless I'm trying to unless there's a critical no. bill and somebody could step off to go down and do a bill, we've got to go yeah. schedule, I, I believe, or we'll never get this work done. Um, depends on what's on the calendar, I guess. But I'm thinking if there's anything, um, I, I so guess. It's we could duel and Teresa could let us know of votes and we could have dueling screens and yep. do work. Yeah. And I could listen to the floor. And she can keep us apprised of, of what's on the floor. Yep. Um, I have a 30 second delay with the YouTube, but it still should be okay. Okay. So we're just to read, <laughs> so it's one to five on Wednesday, the 10th? Yeah, and, and then Thursday, let's meet from, 8.32, I think we have to meet until 11.30, take a break in there, or we're not going to get done. We've got a tremendous amount of work to do. And then break, break at 11.30 with a okay. break before that, come back at one o'clock and let's, let's, let's plan until uh, 4.30 and we'll break in the middle of that too. And then Friday we're on the floor at can, but if we could get started at 8.30 and let's work until um, 9, 9, 9. Maybe we can skip floor that day too. I would, I'm hoping we can. Like depending on what's, yeah. So let's do the same thing, 8.30 to 11.30 again. And um, and if I don't know if we can get this out Friday, uh, let's just put in. I'm really sorry to do this. That's no, okay. Let's no, let's get yep. one to yeah. four thirty. <laughs> one to what? One to four thirty, and I'm really okay. sorry. The sooner we get this done, the sooner we get a summer break. <laughs> this is true. This is no, true. then we got to go track the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, maybe our hopeful goal to get them voted out on Friday night. That would, would give aggressive, but wouldn't that be nice? To have that would be really nice. It would give the JFO and everybody the weekend. And then we could, you know, where, wherever we're at, come back with that, that kind of weekend overview. Remember that JFO has to prepare this work. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we give them, we give them that, like we usually do with the budget. It's like, 
So I think we probably ought to count on meeting at 8.30 on Monday. Monday, so oh yeah. The yep. next Monday you're Good talking about next yeah. yeah. week? No. No, next. Monday the 15th? Yes. I'm, I'm holding off on that one. I'm not I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I already need put to it in. I'm <laughs> ourselves. I'm with you, Kitty. <laughs> yeah. Better so, than Kitty, it in. we should bet Peter? on it. Peter? Kitty, so uh, we need to establish a time to hear amendments to the uh, to the budget for, before a third okay. reading, because I know we're going to have one. Okay. That would be... That should be on the floor. Is at 9 o'clock on Tuesday? Let's meet at 8.30. Okay. Is 8.30 enough time, do you think? We've heard it already. Everyone will have an opportunity to read it. Um, it's coming from a policy committee. So, you know, we're good with where the funding is coming from. I think half an hour ought to do it. Okay, let's 8.30 committee for amendments. Thank you, Peter, for that. So, what day are we going to do that? Let, Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday at 8.30. That's the ninth. No, no, no. Tuesday the ninth. Tuesday oh, okay. Night. Thank you. Okay, Kitty. Yes. I've got an issue. I have a doctor's appointment at nine twenty. Um, in Rutland. So um, that means I have to leave here by quarter to nine. I probably get home about ten fifteen. Okay. So. Um, we're on the floor from 9 to 10.30. You may miss third reading of the bill, Bob. Um, I know. Okay. I know. okay. And if you have I, any I, issues with that language, you need to talk to Peter if you're going to be gone when we vote it. Okay? Yeah. So, so Kitty, did I just want to check to see if I could. Am I on? In the yes. right spot. On Tuesday the 9th, we're also on the floor from 3.30 to 4? Or what was? No, that's a caucus. Oh, okay. Thank you. And Marty, your hand is up. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about all of these CRF requests. They're going to come in from various committees, allocating some of that $964 million, whatever. Then is the idea we will put all that together in one single mm. bill? Yes. And say uh, we appropriate this for this and this and this and this and this? Yep. So we will sort through the requests that we get, vet them, decide which ones we think are appropriate or not, and present one bill with all of them together. Yep. It's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 OK. Um, that's because we can do it. I have every of course can. <laughs> it's, just, it's just all those other people. <laughs> All right, I'll right see you on you. the floor where our bill is up first and uh, okay. everyone is fully prepared and I think we're ready to go. Trisha, right. I'm so sending this. What's okay. that? I'm what? sending the, the photo. I'll wait for the email from you. So I sent the email to you and Mary and to the whole group that you need to reply all to. Okay. All right, I'll find it. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to go off live now. Yep.